family and neighbours would say, because they were still very prejudiced then. She said, you please yourself, June, but she said, Hines will get fed up with being here. You'll want to go home after a few months. You must have been worried sick. I was out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. Because, of course, you hate telling your parents. How old were you? I was 18, I think. 19 when we got married, yes. Were you afraid that you might lose him? Not in my heart, I wasn't, no. I knew he wouldn't go and leave me. He was very sincere. And yet you gave him a photograph. Mm. Can you remember what you, you Never said? forget me. That was in case the commandant sent him back home because I had to go to the commandant of the camp to get permission to marry him. What was that like? Frighten him. How did you explain the predicament that you were in? I just told him the truth. And he said? He heard it the day before that the Prime Minister announced that English girls could marry German prisoners of war, so it would be OK. That must have been a weight off your mind. I, it definitely was. And the next day I was down the registry office <laughs> arranging the wedding for three weeks' time. Heinz and June were married at Southampton Civic Centre on August the 14th, 1947. And most of the prisoners of war came that wanted to. And the prisoner of war band played at our wedding as well. What sort of band was that? Oh, sort of a German umpire band. Very good, happy music. Oh, it's lovely. Everybody, the old camp, did done everything for us. And Amy and I stayed up all night doing the reception ourselves. What did you have? Oh, sausage rolls and the normal things, you know, sandwiches and stuff. We couldn't get a lot because things were still on Russian then. Did you have a wedding cake? Yes, we did, actually. Amy bought that for me as my wedding present. And she also bought my wedding ring. Because Heinz had... He had no money at all. They got a penny an hour, but that was used up soon on toiletries and stuff, yeah. So what about the wedding night? The wedding night? There was no wedding night. We had the reception until 10 o'clock, and then the prisoners of war all had to be in the camp by then. They took me back to the camp and two nights to go home. That wasn't very good, was it? No, it wasn't very good. Altogether, though, a happy day. But in the next few weeks, those who knew June, and many who didn't, made their feelings about the wedding very clear. I had a load of hate mail, two big black sackfuls of it, and I took it to the police and asked them what I should do about it. And he said, just burn it and forget it. And did you? Yes, yes. Did you get any letters that supported you and wished you well? I got one, and that was from a couple in Chandler's Ford. What did they say? You can't help who you fall in love with, so we wish you all the best, and it was beautiful. How long did it take your mother to realise that this was you and Heinz for life? I don't really think she did, actually. That must be a regret for you. Not really, I didn't care. I was happy and I was in love and I didn't care. All that was 60 years ago, and given the usual ups and downs, Heinz and June have had a happy marriage. Heinz earned his living on the land and travelled all over the country. I worked on a farm milking the cows, getting up at four o'clock in the morning. He was erecting Dutch barns on farms and he went all over the country. In Scotland, Wales, everywhere. Was he good at his job? He, very much so. He was a supervisor. He worked away for two or three weeks at a time. But it was lovely when he came home. It was like a honeymoon each time. <laughs> They've raised six children, Peter, Keith and Paul, John, Angela and Anita. Heinz has raced pigeons in his spare time. Peter started it, my oldest son. When he was at school, he had pigeons. I used to take them to school up my jumper and <laughs> let them go, and they'd be at home when I got there. I had pigeons when, at home when I was a youngster. What is it about pigeons? A mystery. Nobody knows how they do it. They were very good flyers. A pair of them, they got loads of cups and trophies here. Just occasionally, the hostility Heinz and June had felt when they married was also experienced by their family. 
Children used to hate us. I got beat up about three or four times, I think, just by, you know, older kids at school. Why? Because they hated the Germans, the war. I got took into an air raid shelter and they just beat me up. It's all bad, but you survive, you get stronger. Did you have a similar experience? No, I didn't, but then there's ten years between my brother Peter and I and I think things move on and perhaps people were more forgiving ten years down the line than they were directly after the war. They did just take the mickey out of our name. They just changed it to just not swear words, but stupid things they used to say. Like but what? then they did. They well, they used to call me felt prick and things like that. But they would, um, they would do that with other kids as well, with other names. Did you ever wish that your name wasn't Felbridge? Um, I don't think so. No, it's just what you're born with, isn't it? We're all proud of our name. I don't think he ever thought about changing his name, but to his friends he was called Harry. It wasn't an attempt to hide his name, it was an affectionate name, and or he would be called H for some reason. Your dad had a distinguished war record. Did he ever talk to you about it? He, he's told us bits and pieces over the years. He got injured saving one of his friends, which is the thing that he would do. It must have been hell. I can't imagine how desperate they were. Mum said that he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and it was obviously nightmares to do with the war. So knowing that as a young child, it's not something that you keep broaching your dad about to relive memories that you don't want to relive. He's a gentle, loving father and husband and it seems like another person to me. It doesn't seem like my father, a German paratrooper. The Felbridges celebrated their diamond wedding in the same year as Queen Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip. The couples exchanged congratulations. And the Felbridges, Heinz and June, had a double celebration in England and later in Germany when, as a surprise, all their children flew out to join the party. We were just sat down to have a meal and then all my six children walked in. I was absolutely flabbergasted. It was a bit nervous, actually, because not knowing how Mum was going to react, because we weren't supposed to be there. I'm not normally stuck for words, but I, I just couldn't speak. It was wonderful. I've never seen my mother speechless, and she was like a goldfish, <laughs> and nothing came out, just nothing. But her jaw kept moving, and nothing happened. That made that day so special. It was really lovely. To me, they have always been a happily married couple. They come as a pair, they're a job lot. They don't come as two separate entities to me. I can only imagine what they went through, the hatred that people felt towards German people. It must have been a very difficult time. People had lost sons and husbands. You can understand why people were angry. Being half English and half German, I think it's made me tolerant and maybe more forgiving than perhaps other people might be. There's always two sides to a story, and all we've ever really been taught in the history of the World Wars is one side of the story. There would have been people over in Germany suffering the same as we were suffering. When you ever watch a war film, it's all, you know, Germans are the bad people, but they're really just doing as they're told as we were. So just, you know, tell people there's two sides to a story.